Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis. Welcome to episode 48. And this week, I'm gonna show you Puppet Warp in Photoshop, but also how you can use it to completely change the mood and feel of your pictures. Okay, so before we kick off with this week's tutorial, just a bit of housekeeping to go through. First things first, uh, we're in May now, May 2014. I've just organized a photo walk down in Brighton coming up on the 7th of June. So it's only a few weeks away now, but if you wanna come along and join me, it's on Saturday the 7th of June, just for a couple of hours. It's a bit of fun, social get together, going around, taking pictures, great place and great way to make new friends. Uh, just go to the website, click on the link and register. The space around about 50 people to come along you're more than welcome it's completely free and it's just an excuse to get out and have some social the second thing is a um, newsletter if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the newsletter that I put out generally I put about one of these out a month I don't like to spam you but I generally keep it to roughly one a month and I'll let you know about news reviews any kind of discounts going across with other software and companies that I use uh, new tutorials all that kind of stuff generally on the newsletter there and also occasionally I'll throw out a promotional code for if you want to buy tutorials from my web store. Uh, and the third thing is the one I always ask you for, just a bit of support just by clicking on the subscribe button. Just click on that little button there, it'll then mean that you'll know when there's a tutorial that's been added. Generally we do add them uh, one every single week anyway, but it saves you having to search around YouTube to see if I've actually added any more. You'll get to know straight away by there being a number next to my name once you've clicked on the subscribe. That's your way of supporting me, but also let other people know about the channel as well. It does take a lot of work putting this together every single week, but it's a lot of fun and made a lot easier by you guys just giving a little bit of support back, which is all I ask for. But hey, that's enough of me. Let's crack on with the tutorial. Okay, so this is the picture that I want to use to show you this particular technique on. This is a, a composite that I've made just recently, and I think it's roughly about 10 separate photographs that went to make in this final picture. But the actual baby giraffe, when that was photographed, its head wasn't pointing up, it was kind of pointing downwards, and the connection between the adult and the baby just wasn't there, so we've kind of lifted it, so it did have a bit more of an emotional kind of contact there. So we'll jump over to Photoshop, and I want to show you how we do that, because here's the, the picture itself, kind of like, partly retouched here there's a few more finishing touches to do but you can see that here's the picture of the baby giraffe here with the head in its original kind of angle looking downwards rather than looking into the eyes of the adult one here and if I turn off I've got two layers here containing the two separate versions of the baby one if I turn them on and off you can see how the actual uh, change of the angle of the head there makes such a difference in fact that's just a little bit cumbersome there let's just set up a layer comp so we're going to window and layer comps and this is where we can can set it up so that just by the press of a button, different layers appear on and off within Photoshop. So we'll just click on this little icon here to create a new layer comp, and I'll call that, uh, where are we, let's have a look. The head's pointing downward, so we'll call that one down, and click OK. Then what I'll do is I'll turn on the one where the baby's head is up, and we'll create another layer comp and call that one uh, up, there we go. So now all I've got to do is just click on here. So you can see down and up, down and up. So you can see how it makes such a big difference, that emotional kind of contact there. So let's just jump over, in fact, let's just turn that off. Let's just turn, jump over to um, this little tab here where I've got just the basic cut out of the baby giraffe. This was before I then took it into the main image and added in all the hair and stuff. Because generally when you use Puppet Warp, which is what we're gonna use here, it's not a filter, it's actually found in the edit menu and we have Puppet Warp. And generally when you use this, you're gonna use it on a layer where there's transparent transparency, where the actual image has been cut out, because when you go to Puppet Warp, immediately you get this kind of like a, a wire frame going around your image. And although there's lots of default kind of options that appear at the top of the screen here, and you can change those, I'll be honest with you, you're probably never going to need to change them, so long as where it says expansion here, it says at least two pixels. What you don't want to do is to have that going into the minus, because if I just take it into the minus, what you'll notice is the actual um, 
uh, area, the image that you've got there starts to shrink down. That's because it's kind of almost like contracting the selection that you've got there, so less of your image is appearing. So you want to leave that generally at its default of two pixels. And you can turn off this little wireframe here on and off if you want to. You've also got the option where it says um, density just here on the top left as well, where you can go from normal to have fewer points and a kind of less of a wireframe. You can also go for more points to have more of a wireframe there. But generally, I'll tend to use it, everything here set to normal. And I do tend to turn off the show mesh. Well, I say I turn it off, generally I leave it on when I first come in to make sure that the wireframe is on the outside of my image as opposed to contracting it in like I've just shown you. So once I'm happy that the mesh has been laid down correctly on top of my image, then I tend to turn it off just by taking the tick out of the show mesh show mesh option at the top of the screen. Then the next thing you need to do is just lay down some points on your image that you want to remain rigid so that when you make adjustments, it doesn't let those areas kind of twist around as well. Here's what I, basically what I mean. I'm gonna put in a pin right at the top of his front legs and then one right on the top of his so kind of like hind quarters one at the base of the neck, I'm just clicking and pressing down once here, and then one at the, where his head and his neck join right at the top just here. Now, when you lay down these pins, this basically means that whenever you make any adjustments, the adjustments will pivot on those points. And I tend to put them where there's a joint or a limb, if you know what I mean, like there's a shoulder joint or the base of the neck and what have you, or wrists and what have you. Okay, so now then, I can see that at the top of the, the pin where I've just laid down where the base of the head and the neck joint, it's got like a little dot right in the center of it. That means the one that is, is active. That's the one I can now use. So I click in the middle of it, and then I start to just move my cursor around. And you'll see that as I do that, the neck, the head remained in the same angle, but the neck is pivoting on that pin that I laid right at the base of it, kind of like his neck and shoulder area. But the great thing is none of the legs are moving, and that's because they're anchored in place now by these pins. So I can move it around. What you've got to be careful of is not going too far and stretching out, almost like, like using Liquify where you can really stretch those pixels and they become distorted and unrealistic. So you have to be very subtle with what you're doing here. So I'm going to move his neck to around about there, let's say. Now I want to make his head tilt backwards so his eyes are looking up towards the adult uh, giraffe. So I'm going to put a pin right at the base or right at the end of where his nose and mouth are, somewhere like that. That one's active because it's got that little dot in the middle of it. So I put my cursor in it, click, and then I can tilt his head upwards. But when I do that, because we've got this pin keeping it all anchored at the base of his head, his face has now been a little bit distorted. So what I will tend to do now to kind of like shape it all up and make it look better is I'll put a pin right in the middle of his face, then I can click and drag that up just to make his face just look a little bit more original to how it should be. So something like that. And I might actually might change the angle of his neck now as well, because if he's looking up, the neck might have become just a little bit straighter. So I'll put a little click in there, then put my cursor in the middle of it, and then drag that up as well. So a very simple way of moving angles and changing the mood here. Now, one thing to mention about these pins, when you've put them into place and you do your movements, they need to stay there. Because if you start to take any away, you'll then notice that the uh, object you're moving will start to contort back to how it used to be. The way that you remove a pin, in case you put one in the wrong place, is put your cursor near to it, hold down your Alt or Option key, and you'll see that it changes to a pair of scissors, and then you just click. And you'll see that once I've released that, the neck has then dropped down to its original position. So only remove them when you actually put them in the wrong place. Don't put them into place, move your image around to how you want it, and then think that you can actually get rid of them. You just leave them in place and then just drag them where you want them to be, something like that. So that's how you generally use Puppet Warp on an image that's been completely cut out on transparent with a transparent background. But the great thing is, if we just jump over to my uh, image over here now, this is the one that we've got where I was working on the composite, and we'll just do it so that the, uh, let's just get rid of that layer there, the one with the heads looking up, I'll get rid of that one. Now this one here, here's the baby giraffe, I'm always talking about working non-destructively, so what I haven't done is cut the giraffe completely off its original background. If I just hold down my shift key and turn off the layer mask, you can see that 
Looks like he's got uh, grassy kind of boots on. Let's just turn that off. You can see that the original background is still there. I've just cut him out and applied that to a layer mask so that everything is still there, all working non-destructive. But the great thing is, Puppet Warp also works with layer masks. So here's our baby giraffe. I'm on that layer now. I then go back to Edit and Puppet Warp. The layer, you can see that that mesh has been applied now only to the baby giraffe. And just like before, we lay down some pins. So I put one on his hindquarters, one at the base of his front legs, one at the base of the neck, base of the head, and then one right at his nose there. In fact, let's get rid of that, um, get rid of that mesh. And then I can move the head like this. And we can put one on his neck and we can sort of straighten the neck out just a little bit as well. And I'll put one on his face and we'll just straighten that face up. So now we can very quickly change the angle of his face and you can see already the difference that makes getting that eye contact in between the two giraffes. Once we've done it, we then just click on the little tick icon to commit that into place. And we can see now when we look at the layer mask, even the layer mask has followed along purely because we've got this little chain icon here connecting the cutout and the layer mask together. So whatever makes uh, changes we make will also be reflected in that layer mask as well. Now, just one thing to mention about this is Puppet Warp is not a filter. So what you can't do is use it as a smart filter and with a smart object. So we're always talking about working non-destructively here. So this is my advice, or the only thing I would suggest you do when you're doing this, let's just go back a bit so his head's pointing down again, is once you've got your cutout and you've got your layer mask, I generally create a copy of that layer. And we do that by pressing Command or Control J and then I'll just turn one of them off. So then I can carry on doing my puppet warp, but I've always got one there just in case I completely mess it up. This one here underneath is there for me to redo it again. It's not ideal, but it's a way to work fairly non-destructively because we don't have access to smart filters. But there you go, that's just quickly showing you how you can use Puppet Warp to just make changes and angles and stuff like that to completely change the mood and feel of your pictures. Okay, so there you go, nice and quick, nice and simple. It's just a way to use Puppet Warp, which when it first came in was a bit of a novelty, I think, for a lot of people, me included. But now I'm finding it's a great way to make just subtle changes to the angles of things. And those subtle changes can make a huge difference to the overall feel to your picture, just like it has in this giraffe one here. I think with the head pointing down, there was definitely something missing, but just that slight change in angle really made those two giraffes there connect. But I use this a a lot on other pictures as well when you want to change the angle of somebody's head or position slightly on an arm but you name it the only thing you've got to be careful of is like I said in the video there was to not overdo it it's like using liquify that if you do it too much you stretch those pixels and then the picture starts to break down and it also doesn't look realistic but uh, but hey that's pretty much all I've got for you this week click on the subscribe button and I'll see you next time